Hi, it's Bernie Goldbach. Well, on the 27th of November, 2011, you're looking at a photo in Kabul of Shaquille Nardiri teaching people to drive. And it's inside Spectrum, which is a magazine by the Sunday Times. And you're with me, Bernie Goldbach, looking at the Sunday Business Post and the Sunday Times from my back garden in Ireland. Big news. David Drum speaks out. Front page paper article by Richard Kern, an exclusive interview, and it dribbles over on the next week. I imagine through the Business Post on a website. Really interesting stuff. Really interesting stuff. If you're looking for reasons about the meltdown in Ireland, especially the property crash, this interview goes to the quick of it and to the idea that a lot of people who are in high-ranking positions and with piles of money do not understand contracts for differences for the measurement of risk. I talk about a little bit of that on www.insideview.ie where I live and blog. Top quotes where I am on a lot of websites like on audioboo.fm one of my most favorite websites. Inside this paper of the Sunday Business Post, public pay is back on the cabinet agenda, says Cliff Taylor. Quick part agreement. Probably not going to cut basic pay, but probably will cut the future of annual increments made to public servants. This basically means that um, it'll be less satisfactory to stay longer. Very little seniority of that increment. Introducing the new digital platforms is an ad I'm pointing out on the Sunday Business Post because, look, it's available on your iPad, which is a good idea, desktop, on your mobile. This is actually a weak link. It does show up on the mobiles that I have, but you know it could be optimized for mobile. And if you're watching Adrian Weckler or Catherine Romani, you know, when I click on one of these um, stories and then I read it and then I go back when I'm on the mobile, behind it to go back to kind of where I was. I wonder how these guys are going to make out. Get your folks online.ie is the initiative that Google and Age Action Ireland are running. Lots of stuff there about introducing to the internet and buying online. I'm wondering if Get Your Folks Online also pertains to Get Your Folks Online to read smart news like the Sunday Business Post. Good app. Good idea. I think it's part of the landscape. Here's this interview. Sean physically moved backwards with a shock. That's an outtake in the interview by Niall O'Dowd when David Drum what he's referring to was Sean Fitzpatrick was buying a big sh um, share. Actually, no. Um, yeah. When when Quinn was buying a big whack of Anglo-Irish Bank, Sean Fitzpatrick just did not believe what was going on, that it was possible for him to do it. And the reason why that's important is because um, the Quinns actually didn't know what Anglo's books were like. So says, suggests the interview. I cannot imagine that the head of the government did know about what was going on. So says David Drum. Now look, you missed this in the app. If you looked at this in Business Post. You'd miss the fact that on this two-page, really well-written article, there's information about new pensions, accountants, investment opportunities, new managing partner for Grant Thornton. I mean, <laughs> to talk about either... Uh, insinuations or a good placement. You miss all that. You miss it. You miss it in the app. David McWilliams, the man who forecasts the banking, the dissolution of the Irish banking sector, says, look, the euro has always been doomed. Two-speed eurozone is the only way forward. And his point is, you need to do that because it's the only way you're going to save France and Germany. Not just, not just Greece or Ireland or Spain. Pride of Place for Irish Towns, Siobhan Brett, finds a really interesting story about Dunleary and Athai, connected through the Brand Project to um, other uh, Welsh towns of Ryle and Holyhead. So the idea is 75% funding. It's kind of like Pride of Place. It's a, it's an, it's a way of um, increasing the identity of towns in Ireland and in Wales. And you know what? If you're watching this and you're from Cashel or Tip, or Clonmel, which some of, some of my 29 listeners and viewers are. This would be interesting to get in on because I doubt, I mean, Interreg is going to go away as a concept, but this idea is really, really good. Trying to get a, a, a visual brand, um, an interactive brand, um, pop-up initiatives and things like that. This is something we have to do in Ireland, more brand aware. And you know what? Part of what I would do if I was doing round two for that I'd bring the brand noise into a measurement of the tonality of the message about, say, Tipperary or about Ireland, Southeast Ireland. 
I bring it into, you know, unique things that you can put in hampers. And this is pretty interesting for me to look at. Christmas hampers available 20 years in the business. I got, what, one hamper in my life in Ireland. Gave away two. I wonder how many people are giving away Christmas hampers this year. I wonder how many people are checking in when they're away. This is a point that Ray, was raised by Paul Watson last week. Why would you, why would you um, fake where you are? Well, Margaret O'Brien has a point that she makes in the back of reports that burglaries in Ireland increased by 4.1% between July 2010 and July 2011. I, I fake where I am on Foursquare. So people really don't know exactly where I am sometimes. So like when I say that I'm at home, and I do declare home, maybe I'm not. Hmm. Maybe I'm confusing those burglars, or maybe not. Dick O'Brien has a really good story about European Court of Justice ruling that ISPs can't block, can't block, can't do, they shouldn't, should not install filtering software to block the illegal downloading of copyrighted material. That is good for the consumer. And... Adrian Weckler, in his column, Reality Bites, talks about the whingers, uh, whinging when you're watching Twitter and watching RTE's Late Late Show. And he asks the question, you know, if you're going to sit there and for an hour and a half watch a show you don't like, at which point does the notion of simply changing the channel occur? Right, so, but Adrian, you're actually into something that's bigger. It's an Irish thing. And some of the, the biggest names in Irish social media would say it's your right to gripe. And in fact, Twitter is best used. It's used to best effect to whinge, to complain, than to give out about people, about brands, and about other stuff. Ruth Wildgust finds event management in conferencing something worth talking about. She zeroes in on Alan Barrett, financial director of Event Elephant, a really good piece of software, an award-winning software as a service. Um, if you're running an event, this is probably the software you want to use because it provides a flow for multi-page registration. Hey, if you're watching this on YouTube, you probably know I'm using an Xperia ARC to record this. So it's one pass operation and the, the phone, zo it does its zooming. So it would zoom in on this news. Motorists are facing a huge tax blitz. Stephen O'Brien, the political editor, points out, like in my case, our, our fee is going to go from 156 euro to 220 euro. And everyone at the low end of the band with those economical cars, they're going to face a hit as well. So, you know, 5% rise for sure, no matter what kind of vehicle. I mean, that money normally goes into local authorities to where they can buy salt for the road and do road repairs. Hey, how about this? Video games really do change the, change the brain, the study says. And the Jonathan Leake, a well-respected science editor, points out this is research from the University of Indiana, the Indiana University School of Medicine carried out MRI scans of 22 men, split them into groups, and found out violent boys have activity showing up in the brain. And you know what, though? Go to the back of this paper. It's the Sunday Times. Kathy Foley points out how important games are to Ireland. Ireland could become a global games hub. Why? Because look at this. There are more games developers now, more people working in games than in film. Hmm. That's true. I work in training those games developers. Don't let Croke Park deal harm social cohesion, says the lead editorial in the Sunday Times. Labor backbenchers are fighting austerity. They don't want to go to war with the public service unions. But you know what? The only way that you're going to be able to get real cuts done is to cut pay from people like me, because I get civil service pay, I teach at third level. But that, it's going to have to happen. Um, Sunday Times reported earlier this month that only nine civil servants out of 17,000 were denied a pay increase for doing the work really well. You know what? If you do real work really well, and um, that means your boss is going to get money for doing work really well, too. This is the two-page coverage, which is just continuing to roll. Colin Coyle writes, State of Fear at Montrose. It's a story about, you know, your man, the, the priest, accused of praying and raping and fathering a child, Kevin Reynolds. And the woman behind it, Aoife Kavanaugh, the uh, investigative reporter, basically responded, maybe on her own, to solicitors who were saying, look, be careful about this. You know, our, our client wants you to, um, you know, well, our client wants to take a paternity test. And uh, it looks like she didn't actually bring the, the emails through to the RT solicitors. It also looks like RT doesn't have any kind of arm of fact-checking, which is a real shame. 
In a related article, Jennifer O'Connell, who writes Off the Message, the Agenda magazine item every week in the Sunday Business Post, points out that, look, journalism is actually degrading. It's now anybody that can shoot a, a really good image and get it up there, get it to the news desk. It's going to be running. So like the democ democratization of news and the elevation of news um, to something that's user-generated, actually taken over what we think has been the fourth estate. Elsewhere in the Sunday Times, take the fast track to tech triumph. Sandra O'Connor writes the article about really cool stuff for older people. Uh, the, the technology startup is called Health Comms, and it's like Facebook for, for the elderly. And I listened to Tom Byrne describe this thing on the news the other night, um, actually on a feature that RT had after the news. Good ideas, um, really well integrated, and it's something that uh, I think anybody who's living on their own rurally would, uh, would like. You'd also need to have broadband to do it, though. Galway's winning leads to Oscar Longlist. Pretty cool. Ethna Shortnell writes a story. So if you get into the Galway Film Flaw, it's a qualifying festival as a short, uh, short route to the, to the Oscar nomination. And in the um, YouTube clip, I'm showing you here a picture of Granny, Granny O'Grimm's Sleeping Beauty, done by Brown Bag last year. Um, phone users ringing up big roaming bills. Harry Leach warns about that. And, you know, if you're not using Max Roam when you go overseas, you're probably stupid. Uh, mobile phone apps pull down data. So unless you, unless you know how to neuter the mobile phone, you're going to keep getting notifications such as, Bernie just put up a YouTube clip if you're subscribed to me. You may not want them. Okay, you may want a better phone. This is the one that um, I'm using the baby right now, the Sony Ericsson Xperia Arc, not the S. But it does this, but you might not know. So if you're watching this or listening to me, you may not know that the Sony Ericsson suite integrates everything into Facebook like the music you're listening to. Okay, you can see more stuff about that phone. Flickr.com, stroke photos, stroke Irish eyes. www.insideview.ie, where I work online on my blog. Bernie Goldbach in the back garden saying thanks for listening and bye for now. Take care, lads.